So in the previous chapter lesson we discussed about the history part and in the part of the history we discuss about the old history and under old history we knew about the causes of old war first and we understood that there were fundamentals four factors of the old war first the first one was the militarism yeah a for alliance i for imperialism and n for nationalistic feeling m a i n main and we knew that the old war first was as claimed by the american president woodrow wilson as war to end wars further created series of war actually so today we will continue the topic and we'll conclude today the events consequences and the role of nepal okay so first of all let's go to the exclusive option and further we'll discuss so let me have the screen share so today we'll discuss about the consequences of the world war first and to understand this we have to understand that actually some of the events and in course of the discussion we'll also talk about some of the events so it is a combination of both okay so as you can see here the old war fought the great war and we have discussed last time about the chemical warfare or you can see the because you can see some of the operators the attire these soldiers in some kind of special gas mask means at that time they had the poisonous gas chlorine or green gas so it was not only the war of bullets it was the war of chemicals as well okay you can understand this basic assumptions now let's go further today we will discuss about the consequences of old war first as you all know that the war started from 1914 and it was due to the enmity between the two hostile groups one was the central axis force uh, known as the central powers germany austria hungary serbia you know these were having some kind of issues and especially the issue was between the austria and serbia as the austrian prince asked the france ferdinand was murdered by the serbian nationalist the black hand society member gabriel princip 19 year old boy who sought death the prince of austria along with wife or you can see the future queen sophie so ultimately austria attacked serbia and to defend the serbia other partners like the france uk they sent their army to defend to attack the austria and as austria was back supported by the germany it became war of european power house and ultimately as they were competing in the africa like the egypt tunisia or libya from there as they were also in the you know support of the the allies force known as the triple allies that is uh, the uk france russia that became war of old old war first known as the great war so and ultimately in 1917 we also discussed in the previous lesson how russia left the battle as russia was going through a civil war in 1917 and ultimately in 1918 the war is stopped by a armistice sign that is known as the big uh, of you know uh, you can say treaty of versailles that uh, gave way for the league of nations so let's look at how the war ended and what were the result the consequences of the old war first okay the first consequences as you can see it economic and social consequences as you can see the picture itself is depicting the huge there was huge demand of actually the working force in the europe and also in the world like the asia and africa but as old war first destroyed many young you know active population europe was in dire need of the you know economic stability manpower which was not possible we'll discuss about this second we discuss about the human casualties and injuries that is the death tolls as you can see the crematorium 
then we will discuss about the ideological result that means the old was divided after old war first into ideological conflict you know which thought which idea which concept political idea economic idea was correct and which was incorrect that kind of division was there in whole europe and the old okay it is called ideological consequences next is political consequences means many countries their political scenario totally changed after world war first after 1918 and coming to the 1920 to 1930 you all know that this 1920 to 30 is the background of the world war second so what kind of political scenario was emerged after world war first we will also talk about this and we will also discuss about okay the first point is economic and social consequences and under this let's look at during the war the economic efforts of each country were focused on winning the war like british wanted to win over the war austria wanted to defeat serbia they wanted to teach a good lesson to serbia as serbian nationalists kill their prince so they were trying to actually you know focus on how to win and for this they had invested their total sum of you know property like investment on warfare weapons army okay trade union supported the war and momentously further their labor demands because workers were not so much focused on those period of time 1914 onward till 1920 it was the army it was the you know the troops it was you can say weapons they were given the priority as many male soldiers were on the war fronts women played an important role in factories weapons chemical factories many women even the you know children they were employed in the factories to produce the weapons they were working like you can see working inside of army barrack for production of the cannon bullets you know warfare weapons so let's continue so after the war had ended European countries, especially Great Britain, UK, and France, were in bankruptcy. I mean, they had no money left. You know, their total money, that is, you can say, property, total budget was finished, or they were in a very financial difficulty due to all the expenses of the war. That was because European countries had asked for loans to the United States. and those united states were gaining lot of you know property from the war as well next they were also even trading with the weapons so european country had no money to give back to the united states usa the european governments had issued too much money which provoked a tremendous inflation and ultimately what happened the price of goods in the market was hiked there was huge you know price hike in european market as well as in the america so that kind of financial problem arose the united states became the first old power because there had not been any fighting in the us territory us was fighting after certain year but there was no fighting within their own country so you can see america started gaining you know that kind of power power was gained by both one is military power another one was financial power that means from the monetary point of view european countries who lots of money to the us that us was like a rich you know business person uh, providing loan to the european countries so us was actually controlling europe after some year they had abundant reserves of gold us had lot of gold as well but in case of europe europe was totally in a destruction as most of the you know country were bankrupt they had no even money to pay back their loan and in such way the poverty you know and the economic downturn or agricultural you know backwardness industry backwardness became the scenario of europe okay i think you understood the point okay now after the first economic consequences now let's see the consequences of old war first casualties means the death toll injuries human casualty approximately 9 million soldiers died on the fronts as you can see the picture many soldiers are dead and their counterparts the fellow wings they are 
in mood to support them, at least to manage the tolls. Thousands of civilians died of hunger and the terrible flu of 1918, known as the Spanish flu. You all know, the Spanish flu also terribly you know, made the higher toll in the Europe and subsequent colonial, you know, powerhouses like the British or Portugal, Spain. These are the pictures of actually the terrible flu, same like in this present time, you know. COVID-19. Similarly, many people suffered psychological disturbances, that is the mental health was one of the issues after World War I, and many others were severely wounded. As you can see, one of the wounded soldiers having the support named no leg. Leg is totally you know, abnormal. It is named. Millions of people had escaped from their countries, fearing mass murder, like many civilians from Serbia, Austria, Germany even from the you know the bulgaria montenegro armenian the people they left their country as one example is here more than you can see here how much figure is given here yeah once ten hundred thousand ten thousand lakh fifteen lakh nearly above fifteen lakh armenian civilians from the armenia one of the small nation in europe they were killed by the Turks. Turks means they were the supreme powerful at that time known as the ottoman empire Okay, Ottoman Empire. They humiliatedly, you know, killed more this lack of people from the Armenia. It is called as one of the largest genocide. That is Am Nora Samhat. Okay. So in this situation, there was no actually guarantee of their life, normal life, especially of the life of the young people or the civilians like the children and the old. So there was totally a social crisis in Europe. So after this, let's see the next consequences of World War First. Ideological consequences, that is the rift or shift in the ideology. Political ideology, religious ideology, social norms and values. Okay. Some intellectuals were persecuted in their own countries because they did not agree with the war. Like the case of the Germany or Russia or the case is Armenia or Turkey. Many you know, intellectual people like writers, thinkers, politicians, journalists, they were killed within their own country. Some socialists criticized the war because they considered it to be a capitalist war. In many socialist countries, like after 1917, I already mentioned Russia left the war and they claim that because they are follower of the socialist ideology, they said that this is the war that supported by the or designed by the America and the US, this UK and France. So this is not the war of the capitalist society. So they left the war. So there was some kind of division in the Europe itself. But others supported it for patriotic reasons, like the Ottoman Empire from the Turkey or the that uh, the Rhine or you can say the Reich of the German. They all supported the war. Similarly, liberalism was criticized as World War I was seen as one of its consequences. That means the liberal politics of the Europe, especially France, UK, and US. It was criticized because people said that because of that kind of ideology, that liberal policy, government is liberal, and you, you know, liberal government always think about the people's psychology and in the name of nationalism or fanatic nationalistic policy. World War First was actually you know, triggered. So there was some kind of division because of the thought, idea, how the politics should be managed. Politics should be managed by the king as a monarch, like in the Portugal, Spain, Italy, Turkey, Austria, Hungary, or it should be mon uh, this uh, Republican, like in the case of the Russia and uh, the uh, Russian umbrella nations, like the new country like Czech Republic, so there was some kind of division of the ideology after World War I. And most importantly, there was division of the ideology because many countries became republic after World War I. Like the best example is Russia. Russia became the first communist country to apply a republic with a federal system. Similarly, new country, you know, their ideology was also addressed by the League of Nations. So that kind of ideological shift was seen in the Europe.
and next ideological shift was which was not mentioned in this uh, you know slide is the uh, the ideology of the workers workers became the central point of many countries and workers they got the momentum after the may 1st 1917 after which russia became communist country then all european supreme powerful country including the us they all gave much priority to the workers and second one was the momentum of women women were asking for the equality participation in the you know administration as well not only as a factory worker who could you know produce only some kind of weapons okay so women issue of women issue of you can say working class workers that also got momentum after world war first so these are some of the ideological consequences and the next consequence is political consequence say that the political change political revolution after world war first now the one point you can say that political consequences are linked with how the power and the politics are shifted if you can see before world war first okay before world war first 1914 before onward at that time there was the european supreme powerful you know countries which were managed or governed or under the either absolute monarchy monarchy means the rule of king with 100% power absolute monarchy or the you can say the constitutional monarchy so there was ruling by king but after 1918 and especially after 1920 the political scenario totally changed and many countries started having a liberal type of political system that is the politics managed by party okay politics managed by leaders not like the kings okay as a absolute monarch so that kind of political changes were seen so let's see with the slide the first political scene was uh, it can change it was seen after the peace of paris that is known as the the foundation of the league of nation treaty of versailles there used to be a palace called versailles palace where the sign was you know made it is called as the peace of paris the foundation of league of nation okay let's continue the wait wait a minute it is forwarded okay the peace treaties were not negotiated but imposed to the losing countries by france the uk the us and italy that is the german side especially german side along with the austria was imposed by the peace of paris the treaty of versailles was the most important peace treaty then germany was blamed for the war total you know that blame was charged upon the germany and germany's army was limited to just 1 lakh you can say before this there used to be a lot of soldiers more than 1 lakh you can say it is said that estimated figure is more than 42 lakh soldiers were increased by the german side during the war time after war it finished they had just 1 lakh soldiers germany would have to reimburse all the war expenses means germany had to pay all the expenses that is the compensation chetipurti because they were loser in the war and loser had to pay the compensation this was also a way to weaken germany so slowly gradually you can say the before the 1914 germany was politically like a powerhouse politically it was like you can say relate this to the you know lion lion having the sharp claws but after 1918 when germany had to pay the total sum of the compensation then germany became very powerless like you can say lion without teeth and lion without claws germany and created a state of revenge within the country and within the territory of germany people of germany and many parties formed after 19 14 as you know that german emperor the king kaiser william kaiser william left the germany after the war is finished german became the loser then kaiser william their king left the country and went to holland that is the netherland and after that germany became republic then forget germany became republic then german parties they also raised the issue that now german should be powerful army one lakh army should be increased there more than 24 warship you know the 
navy force warship or you can say the submarine should be also increased so that kind of psychology was triggered because of the political scenario in germany you can see this is actually the german territory berlin is here there is poland poland area czechoslovakia hungary and austria so you can see after that political you know conference and meeting in the treaty of versailles uh, was signed then germany actually lost many territorial you know structures like it is called german territorial losses like the alsace and lorraine was given to the france german one was so powerful you can see the expansion now you can compare the present time germany after world war first and second and the previous we can see that the german lost many territory same like nepal lost many territory after our war with the senior company yes similar situation wait a minute okay alsace and lorraine were returned to france some territories were given to belgium some of its territory was ceded to poland that is the danzing corridor there is germany and it was poland this is danzing corridor this corridor was given to the poland some was given to denmark this one this area was given to the denmark now the question is all these you know agreement was signed after the paris peace you know meeting that was held in 1919 so the peace of paris 1919 made german to pay the compensation pay the land back to their counterpart nations the treaty of versailles was seen as humiliating by the germans due to its harsh condition number one is you know germany was not consulted during the conference or during that meeting they were not consulted it was one sided agreement second it was harsh because the conditions were so much you know strict that german uh, economy would be totally doomed this would partially allow the rise of the nazis to power in 1933 so in 1919 we got agreement and within a decade after 10 years time and within you can say the the in the 1930s that time as you can see the picture the nazi party one of the socialist party found by the group of you can say the hitler and the counterparts that became one of the supreme powerful you know entity in the german history so that all happened because of the the agreement made in the versailles palace which also gave way for the league of nation but the treaty of versailles was one of the humiliating treaty which ultimately created the foundation for the world war second that's why many expert claim that treaty of versailles was the root cause of the world war second that means the seed of the world war second lied on the treaty of versailles and the seed of the treaty of versailles was lied on the that is the, the defense of the germany or the losing party germany in world war first okay let's continue now territorial changes as you can see in the main european central you know areas including italy france all alemania this alemania means actually the germany german is the new word the old word was actually the alemania and next one is polonia poland you are assess means the united republic of social uh, socialist soviet that is the russia romania bulgaria yugoslavia so you can see the austro hungarian empire disappear once there used to be a austro hungarian empire in this area known as austro hungarian empire including serbia but after all war first you can see there was no such country like czechoslovakia austria was very small powerful germany became also weak czechoslovakia new country was emerged yeah hungary one new nation was developed romania there was evolution of a next country romania bulgaria turkey became very less you know shrinked small like new states emerged czechoslovakia hungary austria Romania extended its territory once Romania was very small so there was some kind of territorial changes as it was uh, you know agreed in the Paris conference 
it was all designed after the peace conference in france in this way the there was lot of changes in the european territory and european politics poland estonia latvia lithuania and finland previously part of russia all they also got reformation in their territory yugoslavia a multinational country was created yugoslavia you can see here what one type of race yugs race another one is the slab you know those kind of racial multinational country was developed after world war this is the yugoslavia once see the map here near the greece the ottoman empire disappeared and modern turkey was created this is the turkey this is the mainland of the turkey lying in the right now asia this is the small part of the turkey known as the western turkey in europe so these all reform because turkey means once the larger area of the yugoslavia even some part of romania okay so there were lot of reformation in the territorial so these were some of the new country the reformation let's continue can you guess who is this this person is from the us let's see who is this person president of america woodrow wilson woodrow wilson had a 14 points during the peace conference when they were about to prepare the foundation of the league of nations they had opined that there should be 14 points and he was the representative from us president wilson of the us suggested the creation of a new system of diplomacy between nations which objective should be keeping old peace and for old peace he included the creation of a league of nation which was the antecedent of the united nation before united nation which was founded after 1945 there used to be a different organization called league of nation it was actually founded as suggested by this person known as the withrow wilson president of the us however it was a failure partially means the league of nation partially failed okay how let me come to the point here the league of nation this one league of nation was partially a failure nation because they were not able to stop the further war as it was the guiding principle of the league of nation as league of nation could not stop the war so it was partially failed because first point is united states did not join united states like they thought about establishing organization but they did not join or became the part of league of nation and most importantly league of nation and their ideology their concept their you can say charter rules and regulation were not followed by the major three nation italy germany and japan ultimately which gave way for next series of war known as old war second that's why the the wilson 14 points actually became one of the failure okay points or failure concept because league of nation could not manage now as you can see let's look at the part of nepal can you guess who is this person i think you now guessed who is this person definitely look like a king okay he was king but sirkim maharaj okay known as mr fiste maharaj or you can see chandra samshir because at that time during the old war force 1914 to 1918 okay in the coming up to the 20th century at that time nepal was ruled by autocratic rana regime and he was the sirkim maharaj plus prime minister of nepal and army chief so you can see let's see how nepal played important role in nepal this world war first role of nepal in world war first nepal supported to british government nepal supported to british government during world war and nepal sent 7500 soldiers in you know estimation and first the battalion was sent under the commander in chief of babar samshet and simultaneously after this tej samshet parma samshet kesar samshet all led gorkhali forces to the old war first and all they went through the east india company through india okay nepal supported 1 million pound subsequently within 1914 and 1915 1 million pound was given to the british government 
and don't forget at that time ranas had better relation with the british government many gorkhalis were awarded with the victoria cross and you all know the first person to get the victoria cross in the history of nepal you will see let's run here let me tell gali poliwa here is wait a minute it is kulbir thapa kulbir thapa was the first person to receive the victoria cross because of the bravery shown in the old war around nearly 2 lakh gurkhas fought in the great war that means during that war they used to call gurkhas we say gurkha but they say gurkhas all together okay first troops sent was 7500 later on they some said burma some said k k sir some said all the late gurkhali forces in different period okay total 2 lakh soldiers were uh, involved in the war with their regiments taking part in battlefields ranging from the trenches of the france to persia in present day iran then is we found nepali brave gorkhali soldiers fought in different warfare in the trenches okay bunker from france to persia that is iran so more than you can see 20000 soldiers got martyrdom in world war first and among them many got victoria cross So one of the notable incident is Gallipoli War. This Gallipoli War is so much fight that the British soldier claimed bravest of brave. That is, Gorkhali soldiers were one of the bravest of all brave, friendliest of friends, and deadliest of all. How? Because they fought in so such a way that all the Europeans were stunned, especially Turkish army. Let's look at Gallipoli War. One incident you can see here. This is Turkey. Turkey was part of the old war first as a central powers. Turkey, so this uh, Austria and Germany. They were in one alive, and one war was in this island. You can see Gallipoli Peninsula. Peninsula. Okay. And in this war, in the battle of the Gallipoli Peninsula, Gurkhali defeated central powers. That is Turkey. Gurkhali supported friends and British troops to win on land and sea. it is known as the bravest war fought by any full foreign armies in the old during world war first and the first person to get the victoria cross after this battle is called kulbir thapa the first rifleman to receive the award so in this way the uh, nepal played a very important role during the world war first okay that's all and the lesson that we should understand from the war of first world war is of farewell to arms as said by the ornest hemingway okay so let me get some question confusion if you have otherwise let me stop here now